Get endorsed! Free guitar! Does that sound familiar? If not, then let me jog your memory. Around 2018, word started to spread about this company called TTM Guitars. Now, if you were to believe the words of the owner, an honorable man by the name of Lance Benedict, this company was on top of the world, endorsing artists like Rat, Rush, Ozzy Osbourne, Motley Crue, and of course, Magidef. Now that's a pretty big deal, but something already seems amiss, doesn't it? And that's the fact that the company that endorsed guitarists in what looked like every popular rock and metal band on the planet was one that nobody had ever heard of. Now the special thing about this company was that they were also offering endorsements to anyone. According to them, their signature artist roster contained the legends of rock and metal, yet they were still looking to endorse you. Now what I'm showing right now and have been showing the entire time are screenshots of the TTM Guitars website from when it still looked like this back in 2018. I'll let you know when I move on to the way that website currently looks. Now, the benefits of these so-called endorsements besides the free guitar were things like interviews, press release, and of course, superb notoriety. Now, at this point in time, some people would have already called bullshit and moved on with their day. However, some other people didn't. They went for it and they quite literally paid the price. What would later turn out to be the racket here is essentially that Endor C's would pay in advance for a TTM guitar which they would never receive, nor would they receive their money back or their superb notoriety. Now we will get back to 2018 later, but first... When this whole TTM racket was happening around 2018, a few people had sort of a deja vu, which is something that a lot of other people didn't know anything about. The company TTM was not known by many, but in that niche, in that community it was known in, it already had a less than savory reputation dating all the way back to 2007 when the company was founded. Back in those days, the scheme wasn't related to endorsements, but rather offering custom made in USA guitars at a price point that seemed way too good to be true, which... It was. It turned out that no, these guitars were indeed not made in USA at all, but rather cheap Chinese guitar parts ordered in bulk from Alibaba or whatever and assembled in California by TTM. People caught on to that fairly quickly and upon not getting their money back, a lot of them threatened litigation. Now, once too many customers started taking legal action against TTM, dear old Mr. Benedict sold TTM guitars to their primary guitar assembler, if you will, blamed the entire fake USA made guitar situation on him filed bankruptcy in 2012, and thereby pretty much snaked his way out of all of those charges. This already sounds f***ed enough, but trust me, this is not even the tip of the iceberg. Before I move on through this timeline though, you want to guess what TTM even stands for? You won't guess it. It's taller than midgets. <laughs> yeah. Now let's get back to around 2018, because by this point Lance had scrounged up enough money to buy his company back after he'd figured the heat was off. The stuff I've said up until now can be found through essentially a few Google searches, but for what I'm about to get into, I needed someone who was there throughout all of it. So I reached out to then TTM Guitars business associate and retrospectively TTM Guitars victim Jason McCullough. I recently sat down and had a two hour long chat with Jason and he spilled all of the stories. So let's start from the day he was introduced to TTM Guitars in 2018. This story gets fucked up, I promise. Jason was introduced and referred to TTM Guitars by a friend and fellow guitar player in 2018. At that point, the price for a fully custom TTM guitar was somewhere between nine and twelve hundred dollars, and they wanted a 50% down payment to start building. So naturally, Jason jumps at this offer, as would any gearhead. Fast forward a few weeks, a few months, still no guitar and still no news. Lance apologizes profusely for the unusual delays in the build, and even offers Jason that free guitar that comes with any endorsement as sort of an apology and. To to hold him over until his was built. Now Jason does receive this free guitar, but it has some major issues, but you know that's nothing a guy with a few tools can't fix, it was free after all. And once he'd fixed up this guitar, apparently it was actually quite decent, clearly made of cheap Chinese parts, but decent nevertheless. The thing that also caught Jason's eye was the fact that TTM were offering endorsements to regular guitar players without much of a following. So he applies and he's shocked by the kinds of guitar players that this brand is endorsing, but it's also very clear what kind of guitar players these are. These were largely sort of middle-aged men who had, you know, missed their shot at making it in the music scene, and what TTM was offering them here was sort of a, a second chance at getting at least some of that recognition that they've always wanted, that they've always craved. You might call this the Donald Trump approach. This created a community of people that were internally very supportive of each other, but to the outside, they almost appeared like sort of a cult, 
Much like the Kiesel family who will rush to defend Kiesel guitars and Jeff Kiesel from any sort of criticism because their charismatic owner makes them feel like they are part of a club. Now as you probably assumed, the big guys like Ozzy Osbourne, Megadeth and Jethro Tull were never actually associated with TTM and that was pretty much a flat out lie, but there are a few people on that list who were at some point actually associated with the brand. An example of that would be Randy Jackson from the band Zebra. But even after Randy Jackson cut ties with TTM Guitars after the bankruptcy claims, Lance continued to claim that he was affiliated with the brand, that he was endorsing TTM. Randy said in interviews that he no longer supported TTM, but Lance did not acknowledge it. He's actually listed on TTMGuitars.com to this day, however they've cleverly renamed that list to alumni, and technically to be an alumnus of something means to no longer be a member of it, so I guess that's another clever way to snake your way out of that one and still sound good. Quick side note, that list also contains one Adam Sandler, however no, not that Adam Sandler. A TTM guitar was at one point featured on The Price is Right as, you know, the prize. Certificate of authenticity and lifetime warranty included from TTM Guitars. And the director of that show also goes by the name Adam Sandler, not to be confused with the actor. But it does seem like TTM is using that name to their advantage, because I can't think of another logical reason that they would use the name of the director of a TV show that their product was featured on as a prize, as a former endorsee. So after Lance and Jason talk a little bit more, Jason finds out, I assume not entirely by coincidence, that TTM is offering the opportunity for people to invest in TTM franchises across the world. So Jason signs a contract to purchase the Nashville franchise of TTM Guitars for 7500 US dollars having not yet received his custom guitar that he ordered. People were receiving the free guitars that Lance promised to make the endorsement deal sound more appealing, however when they asked what the holdup was with their custom guitars that they ordered and placed down payments for, usually that exchange looked something like this. <laughs> Jason was now financially invested in the company and technically Lance's business partner. He still believed in the good in Lance and the company, and that's really the scary thing about this man, is how he was continuously able to con people into thinking he's a swell guy despite all of the red flags. Jason took on the responsibility of putting out some fires for TTM guitars in the form of angry customers. By the way, we are now entering January of 2019, and if you have ever worked with any Chinese company out there, you will know that this time of year is pretty famous for them being all, you know, pretty much out of commission due to Chinese New Year. In fact, I'm currently experiencing this firsthand for the first time because I'm recording this mid-January and hoping to someday soon receive an email back from one of my sponsors. So Lance, in classic Lance Benedict fashion, saw that chance and took it, using the Chinese holiday as an excuse for the insane delays in the cheap crappy guitars he was meant to be sending out to people. He was sending out guitars to people without even opening the boxes first, literally zero QC, just factory to customer. Remember that guitar that I mentioned was on the prices right? Well chances are that particular yellow super strat that was on TV was hardly even playable, because around that same time, the factory that Lance had been working with that was actually making decent instruments had cut ties with them because he wasn't paying them. This is where some new characters join the story, two guys by the name of Jess and Patrick Toby. The Tobys had grown up around Lance, according to the people I talked to he was pretty much Uncle Lance for them growing up. Now at some point they decided, and if I had to guess, probably not entirely without some convincing, to invest in TTM guitars. And when I say invest, I mean they bought a 22% stake in the company. Another man by the name of Chris McKenna invested another $100,000 into TTM for a 39% ownership stake. So now, together, these three people, the Tobys and Chris, were hundreds of thousands of dollars deep into TTM and owned 61% of the company. Now, a quick thing, this is really very basic stuff. When you own an LLC and someone buys a share in said LLC, you have to go and add their name to the paperwork for the company. Again, this is really very basic stuff. But now here's the kicker. Lance said he was going to go add the names of Chris McKenna and the Tobys and take care of all the state secretary paperwork, but he never did because of course he didn't because he's Lance Benedict. So while when put together these two parties, McKenna and the Tobys now owned a larger share in the company than Benedict himself, on paper, Lance was still the sole owner of the TTM Guitars Limited Liability Corporation. 
He then proceeded to single-handedly and fraudulently dissolve the company and run away with the money. This was easy as it still only required his signature as the sole owner on paper when it should have required four, his, that of Chris McKenna and those of the Tobys. When I heard this, my mental image of Lance Benedict changed and it changed drastically. Originally in my head, Lance Benedict was this sort of run-of-the-mill grifter, you know, someone who scammed a bunch of people out of a couple thousand dollars, but nothing that doesn't happen literally every day on this planet. But he turned out to be this huge scale criminal and con man who was now being investigated by the FBI after fraudulently dissolving TTM guitars and running away with all of the money. It doesn't end there. Not nearly. You recall when I said Jason bought the Nashville TTM franchise for $7,500, right? Well, in comes another character, a gentleman by the name of Jean-Philippe, who also invested $100,000 for the entire European TTM franchise. You want to guess what happened to his money? Wow, good guess. Yeah. Now throughout all of this fraudulent activity, there were still people defending Lance Benedict, which is definitely not good, but also one can somewhat understand it. If you're someone who invested money into this company, and I don't even just mean like ownership stakes or anything, even if it's just a 50% down payment on a $1,500 guitar, you don't want to believe that you've been f***ed over. This sort of cognitive dissonance is what led to people being in denial about the situation, but of course that didn't last long. Lance initially claimed he'd be getting legal representation from the same law firm that represented Slayer in a 2008 lawsuit against him, but for some reason he ended up representing himself in court later, which is just kind of funny. <laughs> Fast forward a few months to summer of 2019, Lance had opened up a TTM Guitars factory in the form of a rented self-storage unit. Yeah, the garage thing that Skylar White hid the big pile of money in. This brand new factory was equipped with a whopping cheap CNC machine that Lance had bought used to make the guitar necks with, and that's pretty much the size of it. <laughs> Although what Jason told me is that Lance publicly claimed to have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building a brand new TTM factory. In other news, summer of 2019 was also the last time that Lance Benedict was ever allowed on the premises of any NAMM show event. That year and that summer, Jason, who was technically still affiliated with TTM Guitars but had now come to terms with the fact that he was never going to see his money again and that Lance is a scammer, took home a few of the guitars from Summer NAMM. I'm going to put a brilliant video up there in the info card for you that was made by Jason in which he compares one of those NAMM TTM guitars from 2019 that would have retailed for about $750 to an $85 Telecaster copy you can get on Amazon. So finally, the good natured man that he is, after taking Lance's shit for way longer than anybody should have, Jason finally demands his money back. Now uh, place your bets on whether he actually got it back, you know, feel free to pause if you need some time to, to guess. Now if you guessed no, then here is a million six string credits because no, of course he didn't. Instead, Lance posted a giant pages and pages long rant speech about his backstabbing business partners. So let's just take a quick tally of how many people Lance managed to f over and how much money he managed to take them for before all of that money of course said bye bye again due to the costs of being sued by multiple parties and because, you know, it wasn't his money. First off, there's Jason, who in total gave Lance at least $8,000, and he got off easy in comparison to some others. Then there's Chris McKenna, who invested $100,000 into TTM, the Tobys, who did the same thing, someone else who was at least $10,000 deep into the company for another US franchise, and Jean-Philippe, who bought the European franchise for another $100,000. Plus, everybody, end or see or not, who ever ordered a TTM guitar and didn't receive it. So, right now, up to this point, this leaves us at at least $310,000, but there's one part that I haven't mentioned yet. I was told this story by Jason in confidence, and that has two drawbacks. One being that I have to be as vague as possible while telling it, and two being that I technically have no evidence since there cannot be a witness. So I'm going to make good use of the word allegedly. After Lance dissolved TTM, another company was allegedly conned into investing $50,000 into the company under the pretense that it hadn't been dissolved yet. Allegedly, Lance hired two people to essentially act as though they were investors who backed the company to convince this genuine business person, by the way, to invest money into TTM. Or so I've heard. I'm really just trying to cover my ass here, guys. After that, Lance allegedly somehow managed to convince this party to invest another 50,000 into TTM on top of the 50 he'd already invested, at which point Lance allegedly 
ghosted him and fled to Florida because not allegedly there was a warrant out for his arrest in California. Now this anonymous business person has a job which requires a license. I'm not going to be any more specific than that. A lot of jobs require licenses. This is vague enough, but yes, you cannot practice this job without a license. Lance allegedly pretended to also have a license to practice this profession and suggested that they partner up, allegedly. And this almost ended up costing this man his job license. So not only did Lance take this man for his entire life savings and retirement money, allegedly, but he was about this close to ruining his life entirely, allegedly. I feel confident saying that Lance Benedict is the biggest con man in guitar history, and he is starting up again. Whole new website, new guitar models, hell, even basses this time, however, no endorsements though. Nevertheless, it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume that this isn't any more legitimate of a business venture than the previous two times. Another side note, by the way, in July of 2021, the US Bankruptcy Court ruled that the debts owed to Chris McKenna, owner of Step Ahead Music LLC, were non-dischargeable by bankruptcy. This means that despite Lance's bankruptcy proceedings, he still has to pay the full $100,000 back to Chris McKenna. Uh, this is a small step in the direction of victory, sure, but it's still almost just a drop in the bucket because he still f***ed a lot of people over, and we have to stop it from happening again. So, should you ever stumble upon TTM guitars and think, hmm, this is enticing, or hmm, they used to endorse Adam Sandler and Megadeth, then please refrain from buying their guitars or even contacting them. So that's pretty much it from my end this time. This video took a lot of research, a lot of time to make, but I'm glad I did it because word hasn't been spread enough about this company. Big thanks to all of my loyal Patreon members for supporting the channel. You can be a patron yourself for $1.90 a month for all of these lovely benefits. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch my most recent one somewhere up here. You can sub to my channel somewhere down there if you feel like it. All of my social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook are linked in the description. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment. I'll see you around.